Okay, so in front of me we have a GTX 1080 Ti. It's a strict. It's an. It's a strict card by Asus. If you don't know, the cooler looks like this. Hopefully that's a good enough image. Maybe. No, not really. Okay. Anyways, so yep, it's a strict by Asus. So, as you can guess by the fact that it's here, it doesn't actually work. So the first thing we want to check on a card like this is if we have the base voltages. So. The two base voltages are 12 volts and 3.3 volts. So first from the PCI Express connectors, we just need to check 12 volts, both of them. So that's 12 volts. Again, that's 12 volts, so that's good. We also need to check um, 12 volts from the PCI Express slots as well as 3.3 volts. So first let's check 3.3. Okay, that's good. And now 12. Yep, okay. So the base voltages are fine. Now, assuming all of that is good, the first voltage rail that should turn on is not then gonna be five volts. And yep, we have five volts. Once five volts turns on, we should have 1.8 volts and then one volt, and then the, both the memory VRM and the GPU VRM should turn on together. Now, since I've already looked at this card, I can tell you that we're actually missing yeah, we're missing 1.8 volts. But even if we had 1.8 volts, we also wouldn't have 1 volt either. If you can't tell from the video, the buck converter for the for 1 volt is actually missing. So, we can tell that somebody's been someone's opened the card, modified it and tried to probably try to make a repair given that it doesn't seem like it's been ripped off of the card. So, okay. So the first thing we need to ch we need to fix is the 1.8 volt buck converter. And the, the two pins that we, we're going to want to check is the enable pin and the voltage in. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'm going to let you know what I find. Okay, so as you can see we have a close up on this general area of the car. This is the GPU of course, over here. Anyways, so I've been... Hold on. Okay, so I've been poking around. Um, okay, first thing you can notice is that the buck converter over here is missing. I have not done this. I haven't taken it off. It was like that when I got it. So somebody's been poking around with this card. The other thing to notice that is, um, okay, firstly, I have my multimeter set to diode mode. So if I poke something, it beeps, right? So if you take this capacitor up here, oh shit, this capacitor. Now, if you, not, you notice on this end, it beeps, right? Connected to ground, no problem, nothing unusual. But also on this end, it's al it's also connected to ground. So it seems like we have a short somewhere. Maybe the capacitor is bad. But the thing about this capacitor is that it's connected to the fourth pin of the buck converter, right? So that that fourth pin is the five volt internal linear dropout regulator. So it's possible that we have a bad um, buck converter, which is why this card doesn't work. The other thing we have to consider is the voltage in and the enable pin. The voltage in is 12 volts, which, as far as we can tell, is perfectly good. And the enable pin is 3.3 volts, which is, again, as far as we can tell, is perfectly good. So, we have a suspicion that there's actually the only problem is the actual buck converter itself, or maybe just something connected to the you know, this particular capacitor. So we're gonna take this off and we're gonna see what changes. Okay, so I've taken the buck converter off and, okay, I, I've, ta I've taken it off and I've put on a new one. Now the first thing you'll notice is that we no longer have a short on this capacitor. So if we go on this side, So, as you can see, it's still short. The reason why it's beeping intermittently is because my multimeter is kind of crap. But if we go on to the other side... Nothing. But... Then this side... Okay. So, by taking the buck converter off, the short disappears. Which tells us that the buck converter was bad. And so, uh, this one you see here is actually a new one. So, let's turn on the card and let's see if we get 1.8 volts.
Okay, so the computer's on, and checking our voltage. One point eight. So, as you can see, we have one point eight volts, so that's good. We still need to figure out what to do with the, our one volt rail. Now, as you can see, the buck converter itself is actually missing. I mentioned it in the previous clip. Yep. Um, I think that's all that's wrong with it. I'm going to, have to do a few checks, but hopefully we can just put it on and the card will boot up and work. So as you can kind of see, I've reinstalled a buck converter for the one volt PEX rail. This is this uses the exact same buck converter as the 1.8 volts rail uses. It's an NB671. I don't remember what the last two letters are, but the marking is AMCH. Anyways, um, as you may be able to guess, the card doesn't just run. I wish it did. I wish that the uh, one volt, one volt PEX, you know, PEX rail would turn on and it would work because that would be great. I'd have a working 1080 Ti, but that's not the case. So if we just check the voltage, it'll be basically nothing. Yep, three millivolts, whatever. We still have 1.8 volts, obviously. Yep, 1.8 volts. So. As for this buck converter, there are, okay, we need to check two pins. First is voltage in, the second is enable. Now if we check voltage in, that should be 12 volts. Yep, 12 volts, so we have that, that's not a problem. So we can kind of guess that it's the enable pin. It just so happens that I've already actually checked this card around, so if you don't know, the enable pin on the one volt PEX rail is, on most GTX 10 series cards, at least most of the ones that I've worked on, it's supposed to be 1.8 volts. Now, it doesn't come directly from, well, I mean, it's connected through a resistor from the 1.8 volt rail, and the, the reason why it's missing is because the 1.8 volt enable signal for the PEX, 1 volt PEX rail actually also connects to this chip over here. Um, okay, so this is a, well, this is supposed to be a UP9511P. Now, on this particular um, phase controller, it's the 1.8 volt enable signal for the 1 volt PEX rail is connected to the 37th pin on the UP9511P chip, right? That, sig that um, signal is labeled P good on the data sheet, power good. Now, what happens is that this thing, the UP9511P is go will short the 1.8 volt power good signal if it detects a fault or if it's let's say missing some key voltage so for this particular chip again we want to check the voltage in and we want to check the enable signal now voltage in for this for the UP9511P is supposed to be 5 volts and if we just check here yep we have 5 volts 5.15 that's fine that's good enough we also are supposed to get a enable signal now the enable signal is I believe it's 2.4 volts. I guess it's 2 volts, but anyway, in either case, it, it's presence, right? The important thing is, is that it's there. So we have we have the enable we have um sorry we have enable and we have voltage in, but we don't have our power good. So this could lead us to conclude that there's something wrong with the actual chip itself. This is this is entirely possible, but in this case, actually, I think I know why it doesn't run. So if, let me just turn off the card and try to show you something. Okay, so we're zooming in on what's supposed to be our UP9511P, our face controller, right? But if you can, okay, the the writing's upside down, but you'll notice that it actually says UP9022P, and. On top of that, you also note that it's the actual chip itself is not center. The pins on the right are quite a bit more pronounced than the pins on the left, right? It, that's not the angle of the camera. That's like that's it's actually off center from the board. So you, you might remember that we were missing our one volt buck converter, PEX rail converter, um, earlier on. It's it's kind of easy to guess that the person who took it off also changed this chip sorry, change the phase controller without actually, well, using the correct model and without installing it properly. As for, um, well, so what we're going to do, obviously we're going to take it off and we put one that's working. <coughs> uh, 
okay. So I've changed the phase controller. I also have to change the resistor. Unfortunately, I used too much heat and I killed the resistor, but that's okay. It's just a cheap resistor. So let's turn it on and let's see what happens. Okay, so obviously we're gonna have, we now have one volt as you can see, that's good. You, you, could, you probably heard that beep, that sounds like the computer's turning on, except it's not quite there, okay. We have that, we have one volt, that's good. And if we check the GPU VRM, just any one of these inductors, 0.8 volts, that's the standby voltage, that's a great sign. But we have a slight problem. And the problem is that if we check the memory voltage, okay, we have 43, 44 millivolts, that's not high enough, it's... For GDDR5X, the standby voltage, I believe, is 1.35 volts. Somewhere in the ball, in that ballpark, but you know, like, you know, one, between one and one and one and a half is more or less what you expect. 1.35, I think, is the exact number, but don't quote me on it. So, we're missing memory voltage. That's not good, right? So, now, it begs a very important question. Why is there no memory voltage? You know, did we do something wrong with our UP9511P? Okay, so... For okay, you heard the beep, right? The the card doesn't work yet, but we'll let me just go over th through some things. So remember that we didn't have any voltage on our memory phase. We do now, as you can see, 1.38 volts. That's more or less what we want to see. So I checked. Okay, there's a phase controller here, UP9013Q. Unfortunately, I can't find a data sheet for this, and so I don't actually know the pinouts. But I use the pinout of a um. I use a data sheet for the RT8815A. And I'm assuming that it that this chip, UP9013Q, has a similar pinout. So basically I checked what I think is the enable signal. Now, the enable signal is 2 volts, right? So we have that here. And we have th we should have 3.3 um, volts on the other side. Yep. And then the voltage in is 5 volts. Yep. So Okay, let me just turn it off before it overheats. So I checked, so because those two were present, I just took the guess, because I have no data sheet and because I, I can't really tell, I just took the guess that the actual phase control itself was bad. Remember that this was changed and maybe this was changed too. And as it turns out, it was. I just changed it and with a known working part and now we have, like I said earlier, 1.38 volts on our memory phase. That's nice. but. Despite the fact that you hear a beep as if the card works, it doesn't work. The card never boots. At least the computer never boots with the card inserted, right? It just hangs. Normally, when you have a card that hangs, it usually boots after a minute or so, indicating that there's some form of memory read error. You know, maybe the memory controller is dead, maybe there's a dead memory bank, maybe the PCB itself is damaged on some data line, right? In this case, however, no matter how long I leave it, it'll never actually boot. So what we're gonna do is, well, we're gonna hope that it's not the GPU, right? We're gonna hope that it's just something really minor, like, you know, the BIOS or whatever, right? And we're gonna boot into Windows, and we're gonna see if we can, first, if the card is detected in Device Manager, and if it is detected, we then wanna know if we can rewrite the BIOS. Unfortunately, I never recorded a clip of me showing um, the GTX 1080 Ti in Device Manager. I can tell you, however, however it was detected by Devi De Device Manager, and it was there with error 43, and I was able to flash the VBIOS. Okay, so I flashed the VBIOS off camera, and we're gonna see if the card boots. Now, I wanna point out something. Um, normally, when my computer boots, there is no beep to signify that, that it, it's starting. The beep usually signifies that, this, signifies that there's something wrong. In this case, when we start up the computer now, you'll notice that there is no beep. And in fact, not only will you notice that there's no beep, but we actually have an image. So that's the bio splash screen. Um, it's about, this card's about to start the mem a memory test. I expect it'll pass. Um, so we'll just let that run for a moment. Let me just put a fan over the GPU so it doesn't overheat. But like I said, you know, it's running a memory test. This won't take too long. We'll just watch the pretty colors. And then I'll go over the the card and how I kind of, and why I thought that there would be a, um, why I thought that a VBIOS fix would be enough in this case. So yep, there's a pass, that's good, computer will shut off in a moment. Okay, now let me disconnect the card and, well, let me explain why I thought this card 
um, would just require another VBIOS fix. After, of course, all the other stuff that we've done, you can see all the total flux. Anyways, so if you look at the shunt resistor on the back, okay, it's uh, labeled 5MO. It's upside down, unfortunately. Okay, so you see that the soda flux around it, right? That's not for me. I haven't done a thing to that shunt resistor. So the fact that it's changed kind of suggests that the, one of the previous owners of this card actually owned a, actually, um, they ran, you know, power mods on this card so that they could get more performance out of it. So the, the thing about these people who run power mods is that they also often run VBIOS mods. So more likely than not, the previous owner, you know, they power modded their card, and then they tried to VBIO, no sorry, they tried to change their VBIOS thinking that they get more performance, and then they bricked the card and presumably thought that the card was dead, right, and that it couldn't be fixed. As you can see, changing the VBIOS, which I did off camera, by the way, was enough to get the card to work. So, well, at least to start. It can pass the memory test. Um, I'm, I, have still, I still have to stress test it to see that there's nothing wrong. But otherwise, it seems like we've more or less figured the card out. Unfortunately, I ask that you maybe consider liking and subscribing. You know, these, gra these broken graphics cards, I have to buy them one by one. And unfortunately, they can be rather pricey. You know, having a few, you know, YouTube subscribers and a little bit of ad revenue would go quite a long way into funding my rather bad, um, possibly unhealthy graphics card repair addiction. So, you know, if you ever want to fund that and you want to see more videos, just, you know, leave a like and subscribe. That would be really nice. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you in, in another video.